Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of the F1 2021 My Driver Career Mode. Coming at you guys today we have the France GP. Excited for this one, although this is definitely one of my least favorite tracks to drive on the game. So wasn't really looking forward to actually driving it, but of course looking forward to see what was in store for us here in this race basically so uh, a lot of R&D stuff of course still going on we've been really working hard at that lately now as we're still well the second worst team in Formula 1 right now but we're getting closer to Alfa Romeo as well as somewhat closing in on Alpine and hopefully by the midseason we can get really close to those guys now as we have some uh, parts changing out coming into this weekend here in France. I'm trying to be really careful uh, with the parts are changing, but obviously it's inevitable that we're going to take a grid penalty at some point now. So uh, there you see the standings right now. Lewis Hamilton, one last episode in the Canadian GP for our home race. So uh, it's been interesting so far for Hamilton. It's either been winning or he's had really bad races with two DNFs as well. So three wins though on the season for him so far now as he tries to get his eighth drive title with that Mercedes racing team. So we come through into the monitor to check out the race weekend and it was looking like for the first time ever in our My Driver career mode that we're actually going to get some rain in the race and it looks like it's going to be right towards the end so that could spice things up towards the end of this GP now as usually the of course French GP not the most exciting track so I was very interested to see what we were going to have here in today's episode now as we would get ready to make some practice laps here now as we jump into practice pretty overcast conditions here in practice one overall just excited to get more experience around this track and uh, i struggled here probably more than usual on other tracks there is the ct at marduk actually with land stroll but uh, i struggle here a lot more i think so far in terms of just getting used to the track compared to other tracks here because the big leap from f1 2021 to 2020 is quite significant and you can see my mistakes right off the bat there abusing the curb spun the car out uh, and i had spun out a few times in practice and it it just became a bit of a unfortunate trend but we got a handle on it pretty quick so it was basically right at the beginning I was making those mistakes and then I go wide right here towards sector three so uh, I was like I said just trying to adapt and it was not just uh, I didn't know the track it was just the F1 2021 uh, difference now and like I said it really felt significant to me here for France so at Paul Ricard so definitely just trying to get back into grips with the car and I felt like by the end of practice one I was pretty comfortable uh, and we set a decent time uh, FP19 2.7 seconds off but Schumacher he was about nine tenths of a second better than us but he was also on the soft compound so we come into practice two and I've kind of got into a routine now where I try to do as many programs as I can in practice one then I do the uh, little quick practice for the second session and then I go into session three and we just try to set the fast as that possible getting this ourselves ready for qualifying and to give us a good baseline of where we think we're going to be at so uh here in practice two everything was going pretty well here well now is i really like that feature of being able to sim through those programs like that definitely a nice touch from code masters for this year uh but now as we came through running the fastest lap i could in practice three on the soft tire uh we came through with a pretty decent lap definitely could have been a little bit better but we came through down this front straight away to cross the line and we hit uh a 130 30.758 and uh, we would end up here in P13 well ahead of our teammate of Mick Schumacher so things were looking pretty good when we were heading into now qualifying here in Paul Ricard. Beautiful circuit first of all obviously it, it doesn't put on the best races in the world but I think this is a very nice looking circuit on the schedule now uh, as it looks like we're getting interviewed by somebody there in the paddock so now getting ready to take the green flag for our qualifying session obviously we don't expect to get to q2 still at this point but i honestly think within a few more grand prix you might be able to get to q2 on a regular basis on my first attempt though at a hot lap we kind of got messed over there by charles leclerc in the ferrari he came out at the worst time possible and that really messed up my turns one and two uh and I, the rest of the lap just didn't feel great after that it was definitely overall better than what happened there in turns one but it was a very subpar lap 
lap. So we come through across the line. I didn't really put all my effort into it after that point. So uh, we were like the slowest guy here, uh, other than Valtteri Bottas, who hadn't made a lap quite yet. So obviously we got to go out again. I was confident we could at least beat Latifi for sure as well, uh, George Russell. But I'm not sure exactly about my teammate of Mick Schumacher. So we come through making the lap and we gained about three tenths of a second through turns one and two after not getting held up. And we were gaining a lot of time here. I just overall, I was hitting my marks on this uh, second attempt here with less than five minutes left in the session but now up to seven tenths better here as we came through to the end of sector two now well on our way through sector three closing in on the final few turns a bit of a mistake right there going wide but we gained over nine and a half tenths of a second and that puts us ahead of Schumacher for the time being and I decided you know what let's go and try and run one more lap just in case uh, unfortunately I would actually make a mistake right here and spin the car out and that was uh, the end of the session for us so uh, unfortunately as well Mick Schumacher would end up beating my lap and you're gonna see it right there we end up p18 uh, about almost two tenths between myself and Mick uh, unfortunately but we do beat the two Williams of Russell and Latifi but now it is time to go racing here from Paul Ricard let's send it over to David Croft for the pre-race here we are again then at Le Castellet for another round of this year's Formula One World Championship Renault took their first French Grand Prix win all the way back in the inaugural race in 1906, but it was another 73 years before they could take their second. I'm sure Alpine will be pushing hard to delight the local fans here today. The circuit Paul Ricard then, a 3.6 mile track, 25 miles east of Marseille. 15 corners here, six to the left and nine to the right, with the main overtaking chance expected going into turn eight. Top speeds today should be around 205 miles per hour. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position, and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Norris, Ricardo, Max Verstappen, and Perez, Leclerc, Sainz, Gasly, and Sebastian Vettel, Sonoda, Stroll, Fernando Alonso, and Ocon, Raikkonen. Mick Schumacher, the rookie, and George Russell. Latifi and Antonio Giovinazzi starts from the back of the grid. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. There you have it now, getting ready for lights out here from Paul Ricard. Right now, a one-stop strategy. I looked at the strategy. The last two slots of the weather is it's when it's supposed to rain there. So, uh, and of course, keep in mind, I do have it on approximate. So uh, I don't know if that affects with the weather slots or if it's just straight up the percentage before the race weekend that it affects when it's approximate or exact with your weather settings. But either way, we know where it's going to rain here in this race for the first time we're going to deal with rain in a race ai are just so much faster in the rain so that's going to be a problem for us that's something that needs to be fixed uh and hopefully code masters gets their handle on that now as we were well on our way here through the formation lap got the tires and brakes warmed up pretty well here on this formation lap now i mean a lot of high speeds here so it was allowing us to keep those tires warm uh but now we get on the grid and it's once again as usual mercedes up front the mclaren's trailing them they've had a lot of speed lately lando north has picked up his first win in azerbaijan now it's five red lights and it's the lights out lewis hamilton in Valtteri botas there p1 p2 ricardo norris there third fourth down this front straight away it looks like a red bull might try to take a three wide there into turns one and yes it looks like it might be max verstappen i couldn't quite tell yes it was verstappen but Hamilton off to a lightning start well out in front of his teammate of Botas. And there you see Max Verstappen there attacking the McLaren of Daniel Ricciardo here through the now towards the end of sector one. And he gets ahead. So up in 
fourth place goes the Red Bull driver. Now as Perez is trying to work on Ricardo as well. There you see Lance Stroll on the Aston Martin going at it with the Alpine now as the Alfa Romeo as well is going to try and move through. So I had a bit of a slow start myself there now as you see Hamilton well off here in France. Now a great start for him now as we are now under attack though from Latifi who has just more straight line speed based off of the setup for this weekend now as I think we have more engine power in the Haas at this point now as I go way too deep into the corner trying to outbreak Latifi we go for a spin here in sector two around we go and now we've given up everything because we're down to last place and that was uh, just 100% on me I braked way too late into the corner and too hard uh, the back end just kicked out and I didn't have a chance to save it unfortunately now uh, the car in this game is a lot easier to save but I could not save it so here's just, first of all, a replay of our original start. So I got off decently, and then I kind of uh, slowed up a little bit right there, and that allowed Latifi to actually originally make a move on the right there and just about get ahead of myself. There's a nearly get into the back of my teammate, a Schumacher, and that right there, when I checked up, allowed Latifi to get clear. Uh, but then a little bit later, I would actually be able to make a move. I was looking to make a move right here on Latifi, but just wasn't close enough, and there wasn't much of a checkup, which I was hoping there was going to be. Uh, but right here, I looked lunged to the left hand side of Latifi even to the outside here of Mick Schumacher but couldn't quite make it work there's had too much curve but we got past Latifi right there but here you see Latifi he was on my left hand side and right there I just break too late trying to make sure I get ahead of him into the corner uh, and unfortunately I spin it out so uh, that was all on me no excuses just stupidity so we cut straight through now to lap four the two Williams drivers of George Russell going at it with Nicholas Latifi there for 17th or 18th and 19th sorry now there's some contact right there and then that would actually damage George Russell's front wing. So now he's got wing damage. He was going to be off the pace. And that would allow Latifi right here to go down this back straightaway. And get now with the DRS helping him ahead of George Russell. And then, well, here I'm coming up now to the end of this fourth lap. And we are going to blow right on by there. Nearly some contact with George Russell. I don't even know if he thought I was over to the right-hand side or not. But fortunately, we do avoid contact. Get by the Williams driver. And all of a sudden, here we are back up into P19. But a lot of work to do here to get ourselves back into this battle at least now so George would come into the pit lane here at the end of this lap and now on lap six coming to lap seven other than my spin it's been a pretty calm race now as we had a bunch of drivers coming into the pits right now uh, so just in front of us was Daniel Ricciardo Charles Leclerc came in behind us now I'm looking for an opportunity to get past the Williams of Nicholas Latifi we've seen to have quite a few battles with this guy so far this season right there some oversteer on the exit of the corner but now we lunge to the right hand side up the inside here now as we're going to complete the pass hopefully no still side by side Latifi doesn't want to back out quite yet but there we go we get clear of him and move up now into 14th for the time being but uh net place would be about 18th now though down the spack straightaway behind us both Latifi Gasly have DRS Gasly just came out of the pit lane and that would allow Latifi to lunge up my left hand side just to get it on lap one this time I do not go too deep into the corner and spin myself out thank goodness and then Gasly would sure enough get ahead of Nicholas Latifi and run me down in no time. I go a little bit wide through this carousel corner uh, and that would allow Gasly to do that right there. Go up the right hand side and go right on around. So down to 15th place we go now as we came through to lap 8 passing Carlos Sainz who had just come out of the pit lane as well. Charles Leclerc, his uh, Ferrari teammate, not far behind now. So I was getting ready to give up the spot to both of these guys and I wouldn't even uh, use my overtake ERS here on this long straightaway. I just allowed Carlos to go by. Fun fact, Carlos and myself share the same birth date by the way September 1st now as there you see Leclerc go by as well uh, so down to 16th place we go obviously completely different strategies compared to those guys and we have a way older tire than them right now and then now on lap 9 here comes Sebastian Vettel up my right hand side he's going to pass as well as he look at me asking for a weather report it says Jeff was telling me rain in about 15 minutes you see the sky uh, got quite overcast now compared to what it was uh, five minutes ago or so at the start of this race so uh, getting ready for the rain I was asking uh, Jeff quite often when the rain's coming just to make sure because I wanted to make sure we were right on the money there but behind us now in the Alfa Romeo Kimi Raikkonen is having a mechanical failure he's going to be the first DNF of the day uh, he would just pull over off the track and that would be the end of the day for the Alfa Romeo champion here uh, as we came through though now to lap 12 making our first pit stop of the day now is uh, that was my first time entering the pit lane the whole weekend so it was a little bit weird now of course the pit lane in France is a little bit odd to get into uh, but we make it work there so now we come through into the pit lane and I decided so the original strategy was to take a hard 
tire i decided to go actually with the medium tire because i was confident that we could easily get this fresh set of medium tires to the rain and to the hopefully uh transition point into the intermediate tires so uh three second pits up a pretty decent one but obviously right now uh we come out in p18 in front of george russell who's way back because of some wing damage and whatnot and it looks like he's really far back actually at 44 seconds so not sure if something else happened there, if he made an additional pit stop already uh, after the first one when he came in from that wing damage on what lap four. Uh, so either way, he is way behind. And then Nicholas Latifi had come into the pit lane, so we had gotten in front of him as well. Now as we come through to lap 16, an update of what's going on up front. You can see a train of six cars as Lewis Hamilton now comes under attack from Lando Norris. Now these tracks where we've had these long straightaways, high speeds, McLaren has been a strong force. Norris picked up the win in Azerbaijan. And here he is now trying to pick up his second win of the season today. But it's six cars under a blanket. Hamilton, Norris, Verstappen, Bottas, Daniel Ricciardo, as well as Sergio Perez. The top three teams right up here in the mix today. Would love to be one of these top three teams. Right now, some contact between Hamilton and Norris. Hamilton runs Norris wide, but Norris is not going to back down from a fight now. The youngster versus the seasoned veteran of Lewis Hamilton, the seven-time Formula One world champion. Now, as he comes through, losing the spot to Norris. Now he's under attack from Max. Verstappen in the Red Bull now as we come through towards the final turn. There's been contact between Verstappen and Hamilton. Not sure exactly what just happened there. It looks like Verstappen may have been trying to come into the pit lane. Hamilton has wing damage already. You can see he's off the pace. And we're going to get an immediate look of what just happened there with some onboard cameras. And you're going to see what happened. So Max Verstappen on lap 16 is trying to come into the pit lane right here out of the penultimate turn and completely cuts across Hamilton and takes off part of his wing. A big moment right there. It could have been a lot worse, but that is going to destroy Lewis Hamilton's race because here now coming to lap 18, I go by at this point. I have no idea what happened. I'm like, why in the world did I just pass Lewis Hamilton coming out of the pit lane? So, uh, very unfortunate for Lewis now, uh, as although he would just absolutely destroy me right there with the DRS down the straightaway. But once again, now we're closing in uh, nine laps ago this time by now, ten laps ago currently. And we know the rain is just moments away based off of what Jeff was telling me over the radio uh, comm. So, uh, now you can see, as we came through to start lap 19, here's the rain. It is raining for the first time in a race of our uh, F1 2021 my driver career mode so now of course we're just trying to hang on to the transition point Valtteri Bottas out of the session in the Mercedes he's just pulling over a mechanical issue for the Mercedes driver now as he pulls off the track and that is the first Mercedes out but just double trouble for Mercedes here today in France now as we come through to lap 22 still raining of course and Yuki Tsunoda is out front of the pack leading the way and he's on a completely different strategy here he's on the hard tire trying to go as far as he can and if we get to the transition point where we have to go to the intermediate tire we could see Sonoda in the top five maybe even a podium now as Norris Verstappen Stroll all chasing him down here and now as we came through though towards the end of lap 22 I could really see the shine coming out in the track I'm asking Jeff what's going on with the tires right here I considered pitting for intermediates taking actions in on my own I decided not to and I regretted that pretty quick because you can see later on lap 23 the conditions now at this point definitely it's time to move over to the intermediate tire and sure enough Jeff would actually come over the radio and tell me let's go to the intermediate so if we would have came in a lap earlier we could have gained so much time uh, now Mick Schumacher comes in some drivers staying out though including Lewis Hamilton so uh, a few drivers on the dry tire still so I felt like uh, we got a little bit lucky right there because you can see we come into a pretty empty pit lane but of course the one guy that has to be in it is our teammate of Mick Schumacher but we were actually far back enough here where we could uh, kind of do the double stack. So we were going to give up probably a second or two, but we would give up way more time than that if we stayed out another lap, I felt, on the dry tires. So we finally get back going here. Uh, a little bit unfortunate how that all worked out, but it was a 3.9 second pit stop. So like I said, we didn't really lose a whole lot of time. So now onto the intermediate tire. And now the question was, where are we going to cycle out? Because actually just about everybody in front of myself and Mick were still on the dry tire here from Paul Ricard. So now we pass Lewis Hamilton again with just three laps to go in this Grand Prix. It's been a pretty quiet Grand Prix. We've been kind of by ourselves a lot, so there hasn't been a lot going on now as Hamilton, though, not wasting any time. He is going to lunge up the inside and take over 
15th place as we drop down into P16. Schumacher about uh, 11 to 12 seconds ahead at this point and I felt like we gave up those 11 to 12 seconds in that whole mix of our spin out so I felt like we could have been a lot closer to him here today if it wasn't for that and the only thing that would have got us really back into it other than strategy was the safety car and unfortunately we never got that. We got straight through to the final lap of this Grand Prix and Lando Norris was leading the way. Hamilton struggling again. This time it's not going to be a DNF at least. Botas though with that DNF Mercedes will not get points here today from Paul Ricard in the French GP unfortunately for them. But now it's all about Lando Norris who's just having an incredible start to the season. Yuki Tsunoda was actually up there in a position to get his first ever F1 podium. A rookie on the podium is what it was looking like it was about to be here from Paul Ricard as well as Max Verstappen of course up there in the mix here now as we are just kind of struggling to hang on at this point now as you see Lando coming through the final few turns here so he picked up his first F1 Grand Prix win a few episodes ago in Azerbaijan in Baku and here he comes through down the front straightaway in the rain Lando Norris gets his second win of his F1 career for Stappen in second and Yuki Tsunoda the rookie is going to hold off Ricardo for third place here in Paul Ricard. What a race for Tsunoda. Stroll to earn fifth and Perez down in P6. Gasly with a strong effort of P7. Ocon there in the Alpine is going to get P8. Leclerc ninth. Sebastian Vettel in P10 as we would come through to round the final turn all by myself. Almost eight seconds back at this point from Lewis Hamilton. And we are going to come through to finish in the 16th position here from France. So if I, I felt like if we didn't spin out on lap one, it could have been completely different there. That was all on me, of course. Uh, unfortunate that happened, of course, but not a lot we can do about it as Yuki Tsunoda gets driver of the day now. So you have some post-race celebrations for Lando Norris and Tsunoda, as well as Verstappen. Free comes to an end, and it's a thoroughly deserved victory. Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today. What set them apart from the rest? Rain always has the potential to liven up a race and mix up the order, and they've taken full advantage of that to claim the victory today. It's always a bit of a lottery when the conditions are like this, but they've managed to stay on circuit and have come out on top. Our winning drivers are on their way to the podium right now. It's been a fantastic race for McLaren, that's for sure, and no doubt they'll be celebrating tonight. There you see it there as Lando Norris picks up the win. Tsunoda made it on two stops. A lot of guys did three, but you see the guys that did two stops really accelerated, uh, like Stroll as well as Tsunoda, of course. Uh, and I believe that was uh, Ocon as well that did a two-stop. And then us, Schumacher and whatnot. Uh, but those faster cars that did the two-stops, really it paid off for them. Norris overtakes Hamilton in the standings. He is six points below Verstappen. Second place in the points right now, Norris is. He's doing a great job. Uh, Hamilton about 14 below. To see the constructor standings, we are now P3, or P8, sorry, uh, as we would have an interview once again with Claire at the end of the race. They continue to say we're surpassing all expectations but I mean we got beat by our teammate at Schumacher and we spun out the car so I, I don't see how we were beating any expectations right there of course the weather did affect the outcome today I don't think it changed much for us personally uh, we just definitely didn't quite have the car there uh, after that spin out now as we of course got beat by our teammate was it a setup issue or something else I just said Mick drove harder than me uh, and the car didn't buckle under the pressure now as she also mentioned we had a close battle with Nicholas Latifi uh, now as I just said we're both pushing each other other to be the best we can be basically so uh the acclaim was affected by that that will of course affect us later when our contract comes up which actually isn't too far away but it's still quite a ways i think it's closer to the mid-season part here now as i'm going to be interested to see if there's going to be any driver moves here at uh, the midway point of this season or not around race 10 or so uh that would be nice to see maybe a one or two hopefully not overboard with that but there you see the standings one final time if you guys enjoyed of course 
you know what to do. I really hope you're enjoying this series. In the next one, we go to one of my favorite tracks of Austria. I heard the AI are like really OP and I think Sector 3, so that I'm a little bit concerned about because we're already in a slow enough car. So, uh, but of course, though, before we do end it here, I would like to say thank you to the Going Racing members on the channel of MJ Joseph 9001, Timothy Arline, Bubba Jr., Brett Durward, Dark Gengar Gaming, AJ Vasura, Russell Dixon, Kenneth Barnett, Dana 9302, King Matt XL, Speed Demon 341, as well as Illinois Diecats. I appreciate you guys' support a lot, and I really do appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day, everybody.